Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today we're going to take our first look at Hytale's Model Mega. So you might be thinking, Hytale haven't released their Model Mega toolset to the public, and you're right, they haven't. However, by slowing down Hytale's 3D modeling time-lapse video, I managed to piece together about 95% of the Model Maker toolset, so eventually I gained a pretty good understanding of how every button and feature that was used during the time-lapse worked. For the last 5%, I'll make a few presumptions based on my knowledge of other 3D modeling software. However, to avoid confusion, I will call them out as I go along. Originally, the time-lapse video was recorded by a member of staff over at Hypixel, by the name of Thomas Frick, I believe. I'm going to watch what Thomas creates and explain in depth what tools and features he uses. This should give us a good idea of how the software works. Also, to help you follow along a little easier, I translated a lot of these menus into English as they were originally in French. With all that said and done, let's dive right in. The first object he creates is a handle for his sword. If we take a closer look at this menu, it shows us a list of current elements in the scene. In software such as 3ds Max, models are known as geometry. However, in Hytale's Game Maker, they seem to be known as nodes. The first button here will allow you to create a new node. This could be used to create a blade for your sword. If you have a node selected, like the handle for instance, and then press the new node button, it will create a new node but in a hierarchy. A hierarchy is a way to structure a model that has multiple elements. They sit in a chain of command between important and less important levels of detail. So for instance, if you have a sword handle, and you have a sword blade as a lower level hierarchy, if you move and scale the handle, the blade will move and scale with it. However, if you move the blade independently, it won't affect the handle. That's basically how a hierarchy works. The next button isn't actually used in the time lapse. My initial thought was perhaps it's a renaming feature for the nodes. Unfortunately, I can't tell how true this is, as Thomas's workflow is pretty organised. He keeps on top of his naming conventions as he creates his nodes, so he doesn't really use this feature in the time lapse. This next button is Duplicate. You simply select a node you wish to duplicate and press this button, and this menu will pop up with a few options. You can first rename your duplicated node, and tick this box if you wish for the descendants of that node to be duplicated too, so again this works directly with the hierarchy. And finally, you can choose whether you wish to apply symmetry to your duplicated item. This is a really great feature as it will cut your workload in half. To the right side of the duplication, we have an X icon. This also goes unused in the time-lapse video, but I think it's for deselecting or deleting nodes. Below that, we have a search bar for our nodes. Once a node is selected, a handy little toolbar to the right side of the screen is activated. If we take a closer look, we can see that we have a bunch of settings. The first section is Pivot. Here you can control the position of your node as well as the orientation. We also seem to have a helpful colour reference box to help players keep track of their X, Y and Z positions. If you look at the colours, they actually coordinate with the Pivot's directional arrows, as well as the orientation rings. This is a constant theme throughout the software. The next section we have is Shape, and the first setting we have is Offset. This gives you the chance to offset your pivot. This can come in really handy and is sometimes essential when animating or modelling. Next we have Stretch. This one took me a while to figure out as I had assumed it was similar to other stretch tools. However, this seems to work a little different. It's basically a more accurate scale tool that allows you to work in decimal numbers. If we skip a few sections for a moment and move to the Size tool, it appears to only work in whole numbers, so it looks like you'll be moving back and forward between them. They also have slightly different transform symbols. Next we have Visible. This will toggle the visibility of your nodes while modelling or animating. Next we have Double Sided. I think you can only really enable this setting if you're working with planes, or as Hytale's model makers name them, quads. This is a 2D flat surface and only really has one viewable side. If you look closer at this model, you can see the top of the blade is only two dimensional. Normally it would only render the texture on one face, but with this setting enabled, it will render on both. Next we have Shading. This setting isn't really explored in the time-lapse video, but generally a shader would, would change how you view the model. So right now it's on default, but you could possibly have options to change it to wireframe, edge mode, flat colour. 
or possibly view it in Hytale's environment lighting setup. Next we have type. Type changes your node from a box shape to a quad. Like I mentioned earlier, a quad is just a 2D flat surface. Next, I'll cover the settings menu. As you can see, it has the option to enable LOD friendly. LOD stands for level of detail. Level of detail is a term used in video games in which the game renders closer objects with more polygons and higher resolution textures than objects that are further away. For the most part, the level of detail is dictated by the game's system requirements. In short, keep this enabled, it will automatically create your LODs for you. Moving on, we have the attachment tab towards the bottom right hand side of the screen. I've seen this used in the animation video, and from what I can tell, you can add already existing items to your model. I think I'll explore this setting in more detail in a later video. Now to finish up this section, I actually have to move to the main window. A lot of this may seem overwhelming at first, but it's actually pretty simple. These windows are automatically selected as you change your selection type when editing your nodes. So first on the list we have Pivot, and to the right of it we have some Pivot settings, Move Shape with Pivot and Local. This is another setting that goes unused in the time lapse video, but I think with this enabled, this will lock your model to the X, Y and Z positions, and when disabled, you can move it in any direction, even diagonally. As for Local, when enabled, the direction of which your node will move will be dependent on the orientation of your node. Next we have the section below. I believe this affects nothing but the preview window. This section of the toolbar goes untouched during the time lapse video. However, I have two theories about what it could be based on other software I know. The first theory is that it could be a unique way of previewing your models in a high tail lag environment. And the second is that it could be used to import reference images for you to model from. Outside of that, I have no idea what it could be. Next we have the grid tab. It has a toggle visibility button, which allows you to turn the grid on and off. We also have a toggle for solid. This will make the grid completely opaque, rather than transparent, as you can see here. We have a toggle switch for shading. This will turn on and off whatever shade mode is currently active. And finally, we have a toggle switch that allows us to turn on and off our wireframe mode. Normally I would move on to the rest of these tabs, but they all share pretty much the exact same layout. Something worth mentioning though is I think this is the safe feature above the tabs. So now that we're done here, we'll move on to the left side of the screen. And for now, we'll go over these toolbars. So we have Texture, Mode and Layout tabs. The Texture tab has a Manage tab similar to the one in the viewport, and as this one also goes unused, my guess would be that it has a similar function like importing a texture to use as a reference. Next we have Clean. By selecting Clean, all pixels outside UVs will be set to Transparent. So this means if you've painted anything outside of the UVs, it will be deleted. Next we have Download. And from the looks of it, you can download your textures ready for another painting software, such as Photoshop. If you guys can't get a hold of Photoshop, you can always use free software such as GIMP. There's a link for it in the description below. Moving on to the Mode tab, we have Layout. This is the menu you would use when positioning your UVs for painting. If you look at the drop down menu, we have multiple options. We have full mode, which unwraps your model and keeps all the faces together as a single UV. We have collapsed, which isn't used in the time lapse, but if it's similar to other software, it will basically stack all of the UVs on top of one another. This would come in handy if you're making something with a tileable texture, but again, I don't know for sure. And finally, we have custom, which allows you to move any UV faces independently. I think I'll be using this for the bulk of my models. Next we have Paint. We have a history feature for undo and redo, a brush tool, which has quite a lot of features itself. You can draw on a quad to create 2D geometry for your model. You also have access to an adjustable brush as well as a line tool within the brush. And finally you can paint your UVs which update in the live view. Next we have the eraser. It has access to the same tools as the paintbrush, but instead of being able to paint in colour, you can erase it. Now we have the fill tool. So if you're familiar with the bucket tool from Paint or Photoshop, you'll know that it fills a large space within a border. In this case, the UVs or custom drawn shapes act as the border. And finally the selection tool. This may come in useful if you have random UV faces positioned around your UV space. Simply select them in the UV view and you'll be able to locate them in the 3D view. Moving on to Resize, Resize is actually a crop for your UVs. You start with 256 by 256 but with this resizing tool, you can custom crop it if you have a lot of extra unused space. 
and finally reorganize. This allows you to move your UVs into place and once you're happy with your placement, you would select apply the modifications and that would be it. Okay guys, I think that's everything for Hightail's Model Maker. I think this is going to be a lot of fun and has some really interesting features that I can't wait to try out. Also, unfortunately I wasn't able to get a video out last week as it's the end of the teaching year, so I've been crazy busy, but hopefully this makes up for it. I might be creating a few 3D modeling time-lapse videos as well as some basic tutorials on 3D to help you get started on modeling before Hightail drops. However, that's it for now. I hope this video has been helpful in shedding some light on what we could expect to see once Hightail is released. Until then, consider subscribing and I'll catch you next week.